In my opinion, a decent MIDI controller keyboard should have quality keys, transport controls, drum pads, lots of sliders and knobs for instrument control, and for me, 88 keys. Hi folks, I'm Mike. And I hope you will. The hardest thing for me in terms of recommending MIDI controller keyboards that tick all of these boxes has been price. Yes, there's a few reasonably priced ones around, but I'm not really convinced of the quality until now. I've been trying out this new Novation Launch Key 88 key controller keyboard, and I've got to tell you, it ticks boxes. The Launch Key 88 has an 88 key semi-weighted keybed. It has transport controls to allow you to control playback and recording features of your door without needing to use your computer keyboard or mouse. Likewise, its nine faders and fader buttons give you some control over the mixer in your door, but can also be used to control various aspects of the instruments you're using. Further along and in the same spirit, the 16 velocity sensitive drum pads can of course trigger drums and other instruments, but can be used also to control aspects of your door's mixer. Above these, we see eight multifunction pots, and to the left, we see a number of buttons used to change settings, a display, and our pitch and modulation wheels. At the rear we see connections for a sustain pedal, a MIDI out, and the whole thing is powered and connected to your computer via a USB connection. So at the heart of any MIDI controller keyboard is of course the keyboard itself, and this one has 88 keys. I think that may be a first for Novation, let me know in the comments down below if I'm right about that. Um, but I think having 88 keys in your home studio, if you've got space, is a massive, massive bonus. First of all, of course, if you are a piano player of any kind, and, and I'm not any kind of piano player, but if you do happen to be, then of course it's great to have all of the keys that you would have on a piano available to you. Uh, but the second and sort of main reason for people like me is if you're using virtual instruments at all, then having the full range of keys becomes a massive bonus because often they have things called key switches on them. So special keys that you don't actually play any notes on, which change the sound of the virtual instrument in some way. Um, and that just makes your performance much more expressive and much more natural sounding normally. Now, if you have a smaller keyboard, then sometimes you just don't have access to those keys without changing the octave or what have you. And you can't realistically do that in the middle of a performance. So definitely having all of the keys available is a big bonus. You can make sure you've got access to all of them. Now, the next thing you want to know about this keyboard is that it's semi-weighted. Now, a fully weighted keyboard would have the feel of a piano. And if you've ever uh, played a real piano, you'll know it has a kind of a heavy feel to it. And the, re the keys return up kind of slowly, if you like, um, momentarily, but slowly. Now, the thing is, if you go to the other extreme with something like a synthesizer keyboard, they spring up really, really quickly, okay? They've got a very light feel to them. This is somewhere in between. They're not completely light feeling. Um, they do spring up reasonably quickly, but yeah, they don't have quite the same feel as a synthesizer. Um, if you don't get a chance to play this before you buy it, then I want your expectations to be realistic, okay? And I'm going to say it's more towards the synthesizer feel than the piano feel, okay? But it is semi-weighted, so there's a little bit of a of a heavy-ish feeling to it, a little bit. So uh, the next thing is, is the quality of the keys themselves. Well, Novation have always made good quality keys on the keyboards. I've had a few Novation keyboards and the actual feel of the keys, you know, they use uh, reasonably nice plastics and things like that. It doesn't feel cheap, okay? Um, and they're nice solid feeling keys as well. Kind of make a nice sound as you press them down, if you like, as well. Um, how sensitive are they? Well, it's... <laughs> I'm not a piano player. Did I say that already? Okay, let's have a go. It can be fairly gentle like that, yeah? I know my G major scale. <laughs> hard with them as well yeah they feel fine i mean you, they're nice and expressive and sort of natural feeling so um, i think everything is okay in terms of the keys <laughs> so another thing that's really important to me is transport controls transport controls are for the playback of your door they're going to start playing they're going to stop play they're going to start recording and there's usually some other functions as well for example with this one there is a button for turning the metronome off and on there is a, a loop button uh, a few things like that is what we get with transport controls it's really important i find with an 88 key keyboard especially because 
because often because of the size of it, you can't definitely get it close to your computer keyboard and mouse. Okay, so just to have while you're playing, to have that at your fingertips, because you're going to make a lot of mistakes here. There's going to be a lot of stopping and starting if you're like me. Um, then it's really handy to have those there. So you can see here if I press play on the transport controls. Starts playing and then stop. Okay. So um, those are the sort of basic things. And I could arm a track for recording. I can actually do that with one of these buttons over here. I'll show you uh, that later. So we'll just uh, arm this one for recording. And I could start recording by pressing the record button, okay? And then stop when I've finished it. That's what I'm ma mainly gonna be using transport controls for. Now, in terms of compatibility, I would double check the link in the description down below to, to look at the product page for this keyboard. Um, I know that they definitely have compatibility with Cubase, with Logic, and with Ableton and also I think they mentioned Studio One. Now I've used it with Studio One because it's one of the other doors that I actually use in my studio and it was very good. I maybe found a couple of small things that didn't work um, but there were minor things that didn't really matter. Now I know a lot of you are going to ask me about Cakewalk because most of the people who watch my channel are using Cakewalk and as you can see it did work there. I was able to play and stop and you know start recording um some of the other functionality doesn't work um but i'll tell you later that lots of the other buttons like sort of faders and things like that actually do work muting soloing all that kind of thing does work with cakewalk so if you're a cakewalk viewer um then you'll find overall it's pretty good but there are one or two buttons here and there that don't work so I just wanted to touch upon the sort of multifunctional aspect of most of the controls on this keyboard. And I'm primarily talking about the drum pads, the pots above them, and the faders and the buttons below those. I mentioned earlier that these faders can be used to control the faders in your door if it's compatible. They can also be used to select tracks or even arm tracks as I'm doing there. Um, the same goes with the drum pads. Of course, they can be used as drum pads, which we'll see in a moment. But when they're in session mode they can be uh, used to mute and solo different tracks in your door and the pots above can be used for example as a pan control now a really important key on this keyboard if you buy one is the shift key because that gives you access to uh, the ability to change these modes so for, for example i'll hold down the shift key and then on the drum pads there's some labels below them i can switch to drum mode by uh, just clicking on this second one here because it says drum below it and these have now become drum pads okay so i can play the drums with them um, if i hold shift again i can go back to uh, using them as controls for mute and solo by hitting on session for example so there is that sort of multifunctional aspect to the controls and the same of course for these faders and the pots you really often want to be using them to send um, what it called um, mess cc messages to your uh, computer so that you can control instruments in different ways okay so of course, you've got lots of those there to be able to do that. So you can get hands-on control of the instruments you're using from the keyboard itself. I think it's really, really handy. And again, because you can record those movements normally, um, it means that you can really sort of record expression while you're actually playing a part. So for some instruments, it's nice to play them on drum pads rather than on a piano keyboard, not just drums, but some other sort of more percussive instruments as well. And we do have these 16 velocity sensitive pads, which also have aftertouch as well um they've got a nice feel to them i mean in terms of a physical feel they've got this lovely sort of rubberized feel and yeah they just feel nice and tactile and they're pretty sensitive as well so you can get some sort of light feel and then louder you know you play your drum parts on there but as i say they can be used for other things so we've also got some arpeggiator and chord functions on here to sort of help you out if you're not a great player like me so let's start off with uh, just a quick overview of the arpeggio function so i'm just going to press the arpeggio button uh, on here and we've got some different options of different types of arpeggios available one thing i'm going to do is switch on latch okay so latch means that i can just uh, press the keys on my piano keyboard it's going to start to play the arpeggio but i can take my hands off and it's just going to keep playing okay so i'll do that you can hear it's playing there so it's just playing that little arpeggio now as i say um we can we can actually change things about it so with the knobs first of all change the tempo um we can change the swing 
here and um, we can change the note length with the gate length lots of things uh in in that sort of way so look there's that's just sort of going up i think there we've got the option to change it so it goes up or it goes down in terms of it goes down the chords if you as you press them goes up and down it goes as play it goes random etc i'm not really doing it justice but there's lots of sort of arpeggiation or arpeggiation arpeggiator arpeggio features there um, for you to mess around with the other thing that i really like is um, the chord features okay so i'll just switch arpeggios off what i'm going to do is hold shift um, here and then uh, on the drum pad i'm just going to go over to scale chord okay so um, this is where it's got a specific set of chords available within a specific scale um, and you can see when i press these that it's uh, playing some chords there so i've just prepared a little something here i'm just going to arm my track for recording using one of these buttons up here under the faders and i'm going to press record to start recording So if you're not so great um, with your chord playing, I mean, that could be a bit of a life saver and gets the job done. Um, you can also, I'll just stop that. You can also program in um, user chords, of course. So you would just uh, hold shift down and then go over to uh, user chords. And then all of those drum pads are going to be blank now. Okay, so if I hold one down, then play a chord on my piano then that programs that chord into that pad. So I've now got that G major chord in there. Of course, I could go ahead and, you know, hold down the next pad, play an A minor. Yeah. And then we've got those two chords. Yeah. And you can go ahead and program in the chords that you're going to need for your piece of music and then just play them there from the drum pads. Now, before we talk about pricing, I just want to quickly touch upon the quality of the hardware. I've mentioned it a little bit, um, but I think it's worth mentioning. I've had Novation keyboards before and they always do have a nice solid feel to them. And this is really no exception at all. The knobs, for example, they're all rubberized and they have that sort of nice bit of resistance in there, you know, um, when you're turning them. So they feel really nice. The same goes for the fade. Um, all the buttons are rubberized and just feel really nice and tactile to use i especially always like the mod wheel and the pitch wheel on novation keyboard something about them um, they are usually rubberized and they just have that nice really solid feeling about them so overall you are getting uh, you know a good piece of hardware here but the price is also really really good they've told me that when this goes on sale it's going to be 399 us dollars that's really a good price for an 88 key keyboard which is you know from a good brand and you know the quality is going to be there so definitely recommended by me now before you go if you're confused at all about how to connect things like controller keyboards or maybe synthesizers to your audio interface or to your computer at all then i definitely recommend you watch this video here where i give you a complete guide <laughs>